And we're back with another episode of Before You Buy, that show will give you some straight up gameplay and our first impressions of the latest games releasing. As usual, it's me, Jake Baldino, and today we're talking about Rise of the Ronin. This is the newest game from Team Ninja, the folks behind so many games. Uh, more recently, Neo 1 and 2 and uh, Wo Long Fallen Dynasty. Uh, they've kind of taken things they've learned from those games and set their ambitions on an open world adventure in a cool historic setting. And while Rise of the Ronin is definitely almost clearly flawed, so far, I've been having a lot of fun with this one. There's a lot to it, a lot to explain and break down. So uh, before we do get into it, just the usual disclaimers, we've been playing a review copy on PS5. That's where this footage is captured and it's running in performance mode. And this video is spoiler free, so don't worry. Now, I mentioned flaws right at the start, but to be completely honest, the elevator pitch cuts through a lot of that. Uh, Wolong or Neo meets Ghost of Tsushima's open world, just different time period. Basically, a vast open world adventure with Team Ninja's brand of spin-off Souls-like combat, but in a big world filled with quests, side quests, loot, hidden things, collectible cats, towns, NPCs, and cool traversal. I think for some people, that's all they really needed to hear. And I think the game totally nails that premise, at least. This game is messy, and it throws the kitchen sink at you. Systems, skill trees, weapons, alliances, character bonds, a ton of stuff. I'm going to try and break down at least most of it. Some of those systems are better than others, uh, you know, where one area might falter, another might totally kick ass. But uh, combat is the main gist of the game. There's a lot of it, and that is a lot of fun. So you have multiple weapon types to take advantage of and hone and develop, like maybe one katana, two swords, a few longer weapons, heavier weapons, uh, ranged weapons, guns, bows and arrows, pistols, all of them having their own movesets and uh, animations and capabilities. Now, as you progress, you unlock multiple different swappable stances to take advantage of with melee weapons, uh, each of them with their own little differences and speeds, and they tend to have different advantages over different enemies. You have a dodge, a roll, a block, and a special parry deflect mapped to triangle that you're gonna need to learn to get the hang of really quickly. Now, if you've played any of these types of of games, you know that there's a big attack with a red flash that indicates like the only way to defend it is to do this special parry. Uh, and if you miss it, you'll just get like your ass completely beat. Right, so you deflect those attacks and regular attacks more and more to weaken your enemies meter to open them up for a big attack. You also have your own meter to worry about uh, from blocking, striking and uh, burning it on special attacks you unlock mapped to holding a trigger and pressing a button. Now you unlock all kinds of these attacks as you go. And then once you get into the skill tree that I'll try to explain in a little bit, there's more depth to the combat. Like you're unlocking stuff like shooting while dodging backwards, jumping on enemies, using a grappling hook on them, throwing shit at them, and a lot more I won't spoil. But there's a staggering amount of stuff to the combat. Even when it boils down to just like whack, whack, whack. Like there's so much more around those simple combos. And even without a lot of that stuff, the combat is still a lot of fun. Like there's a lot of back and forth sword clashes that just feel really satisfying when you nail it, like a good ping ping, you know, there, there's enough enemy variety to keep things interesting and finishing enemies off always feels so awesome. The game has really satisfying head pops and arms getting chopped off and stuff that make you really feel lethal. And yes, the game is challenging. It, it's more accessible because there's so much to do and explore and get stronger and you can take your time and it's really helped me get into it. And it feels like there's a good balance of challenge and actually progressing and not hitting total roadblocks. I mean, there's still the typical bullshit. You know, you might get ganged up on by two bosses or two enemies at a point, or just have an enemy that just gets you stuck in a big, long attack loop combo. And you're just gonna have to sit there 
there and sorry if you have a job, kids, a life, and you're gonna have to sit and learn these enemy attack patterns and learn those timings. So yeah, it can be brutal, specifically with some of those parry timings, it can be less forgiving, but moment to moment, it's all good. Like there are three difficulty modes and on the normal difficulty, I did get my ass beat the further I got into the game. You can tell from the gameplay footage, like timing those special parries can be really, really tricky. And with the harder enemies, like I said, it can be unforgiving. Not as unforgiving as other games in this subgenre, mind you, I will totally say that, but you should still be warned. Oh, there also is some stealth as well that I did enjoy. It's very simple. There's not too much to it, but you can crouch creep around. You can snipe enemies, stealth kill, throw things to distract, run around on rooftops and assassinate. It could be better, but it's like just enough. I, I tried to stealth as much as I could. It, it's not complex, unfortunately, but it's just enough where it doesn't feel like a total afterthought inclusion. And structurally, the game is open world with stuff to do and quests and side quests to follow. You can track them all in the pause menu. Now, throughout the world, there are bonfires that you can hit that you can cash in your souls that you get from killing enemies. Although uh, with this, it's, it's called karma. So just kill some enemies, run back to the nearest bonfire flag you can find, click it, and cash that stuff in to unlock some skill tree points. It's a skill tree that relies on just regular skill points and specialized points for each of the trees, like dexterity, strength, etc. And it works really good. It's a solid, satisfying skill tree with meaningful upgrades that I actually really liked. Now, this is a simplified system. Like, it's a simpler version of the Souls thing. That's It's a bit more forgiving. When you're killed by an enemy, there's then a vendetta against that enemy. Enemy, so when you respawn, you can go after them to get your lost karma. And you know, even if you miss out, it doesn't feel like that big of a deal because the game is fairly generous. And when you're doing story missions, you usually have a bonfire right outside of the area that you start in where you can click on that bonfire and plan your attack, choose your allies, and equip stuff. You can also uh, activate co-op as well and play along with someone online if you want, which is pretty cool. I might have missed some of it with this whole structure. We got to keep moving, but yeah, there is still the loop of die, lose your souls, that type of souls-like thing, but it's pretty forgiving in my experience so far. It, it's not like the main crux of the game. It's just kind of a part of it. And uh, I will address the elephant in the room. Uh, you can already tell from watching this, graphically, the game doesn't look very good. YouTube videos definitely make it worse. It's a little better running in person, like on, on my screen at home, but this game just does look very, very outdated, man. I love the colors and some of the details and some of the art direction, but it's all brought down by simplistic visuals some really weird jacked up lighting in spots, tons of texture pop in, and even some just really ugly, almost low res textures. Like this is unfortunate because the setting is so beautiful on paper. I'll talk about that in a little bit, but like the different regions have variety, NPCs go about their business, there's weather and a day and night cycle, but it all just looks muddled and rough. And I know graphics aren't everything, but sometimes this can really kill the immersion. You might be more sensitive to that or less sensitive. Maybe you don't care as long as it's fun. I don't know, I'm just putting it out there. This, this game definitely is not a looker. Now, Team Ninja did also go full on storytelling here and it has its ups and downs. It's 1850s Japan and to its credit, I think it's one of the few games focused on the Bakumatsu period in Japan's history, if I'm pronouncing that right. Uh, it just makes for a really unique setting and flavor. You know, you're exploring rolling fields and mountains and plains with beautiful cherry blossom trees, bamboo forests, all of that, but then you're also exploring places influenced by countries outside of Japan coming over. Pretty early on, you're introduced to Yokohama. It's a metropolitan city with a mix of Western and Eastern cultures and people walking around and architecture that is unlike anything I've seen in a game before. And you're exploring all of these places with a grappling hook and a cool glider and a horse. The horse kind of sucks, but whatever. Uh, there, there are shops, there are places to upgrade your weapons, sell stuff, civilians to get side quests from, little things that pop up where you can help out. Just all that open world stuff. Now, this game, there is a lot of that less fulfilling open world stuff. Like, some people are tired of open world filler or busy work. Here, in this game in particular, I didn't mind it. Most of it doesn't last too long, even clearing out bases and, some, and stuff like that, like bandit camps. And I liked the combat enough that I just always wanted reasons to kill things, so I, I didn't mind. 
but uh, I, I did get sidetracked. The story. Without spoiling much, uh, you create your own character in a pretty damn good character creator, and then you set out as a ronin in a changing world. Kind of looking for revenge for your raided village and your lost blade twin partner, but you quickly get wrapped up in local politics and all kinds of stuff. So there's a whole tale here with branching rewards and storylines because you choose who to embrace in this world. And there's a screen that keeps track of your standing. Embrace the Shogunate, uh, reject them, or just try to be a neutral party. And on top of all that, then there's also bonds you're forming with characters that you meet along and pick up along the way. Uh, some are comic relief, some are simple badasses, some are based on real world historical figures. And all of these people can be spoken to, given gifts and stuff back at your home base and tending to them increases the bond netting you all kinds of rewards and stuff. There are some interesting characters and you know, the differences in cultures is cool. The setting, I, like I said, is great, but the story might be a little forgettable for some. It's like doing just enough to keep me moving through it, but it feels like there's a lot of fluff in it. I may not really remember much of it in a few months, but there is one cool thing, one through line that I really like that I, I can't spoil, but I will say there is like a creative spin or two here. Uh, Loot, unfortunately, is not very good. It's pretty unsatisfying because the game does the thing where it just dumps tons of it on you constantly. And because it's got a different rarity color level, you're supposed to just get excited. Your inventory is constantly filled with stuff that just kind of gets dumped in there. And it just means everything that is actually significant is muddled by a bunch of crap in between. It just feels like an annoyance and a waste. And the stats, whatever. Uh, there are actually some really cool outfits and things and just ways to outfit your character that can make them look like a badass at least. So there is that. Ultimately, Rise of the Ronin is a pretty standard open world type of thing where you're clearing out enemy bases, collecting things, and leveling up. Some people don't need another one of these games, but this one has a really unique setting and some kick-ass combat. It's ugly looking sometimes, and it, it seems really long. I don't know how much blood can be drawn from this stone or just how much steam it has throughout, but it is just good video game junk food time. You know, it's not as highly precise as a Souls game, and it's not as artsy and contemplative and controlled as a Ghost of Tsushima. It is very much its own thing. For some people, like if you know what that means or like, or you know what that entails, you might be into it. It's not the next big thing, but it's flawed fun. So there you have it. There was a lot to describe with this one, but I, I hope I got my point across. Uh, this is a before you buy. You know how this goes by now. I give you some pros, some cons, and some personal opinion, and now I want to hear yours down in the comments. Let me know what you think about this game. Let me know your expectations, because I didn't know what to make of this one leading up to it, with it being like a Sony published thing. I was like, is this going to feel different from a regular Team Ninja game? Yeah, like, let me know your opinion going into this one, you know, whether or not you're choosing this over Dragon's Dogma 2. Uh, for the review purpose, is like obviously Falcon took on Dragon's Dogma 2. I jumped into this, but now I want to play Dragon's Dogma as well. So check out that video if you haven't already. But thank you guys for being here, talking games with us. If this helped you out, you know, steered you in the right direction one way or the other, just seeing some gameplay, clicking the like button does help us out. We would really appreciate that. And if you're new, consider subscribing, maybe hitting that notification bell because we put out new videos every single day. But as always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys next time. <laughs>